Since the time of the Chinese philosopher Confucius, around 500 BC, it has been known that the first principle of good government is sincerity, by which it is meant the leader should be the eminence of model behavior, from which right conduct will be emulated. The second principle of good government, and the principle we focus on with our shadow cabinet, is good appointments. It is not possible for a modern president to make all the decisions, write all the speeches, and perform all the tasks he or she is entrusted with the responsibility to make. Nearly all the decisions, speeches, and tasks are performed by the president's chosen advisors. Chief among these advisors are the cabinet officers who administer the executive departments of the national government. Although theoretically cabinet secretaries are to carry out policy rather than to create it, practically each secretary exerts at least some influence on policy. Indeed, policy is not made by a president but by an administration. And yet, during a presidential campaign, voters really have little clue as to who these secretaries are likely to be other than that in most cases they will be selected from a small minority of people who are staunchly loyal to the president's party. In a sense, voters are flying blind when they vote for a presidential candidate without any indication by the candidate who he or she is likely to appoint to high positions in government. As a result, the presidential candidates from both parties get away with what is really a bait and switch. Their campaign rhetoric is filled with poll-tested phrases about a new beginning, as with Reagan, or change we can believe in, as with Obama. But if we look at who they actually appointed after election, we would find not the most qualified candidates, but rather loyal party members, retreads from previous Republican and Democratic administrations. If voters knew who each candidate was going to select for all the cabinet posts, Republicans and Democrats could not get away with their false rhetoric. As a means of rectifying that gap in your ability to evaluate presidential candidates, we offer our shadow cabinet. The shadow cabinet comprises the individuals we will require our citizen president select for most of the higher positions that will need to be filled. None of the individuals in our shadow cabinet have been or will be contacted by Citizens for the Common Good, informing them about their selection or inquiring about their likely acceptance should it ever be offered. Moreover, even when our citizen candidate selected these individuals, asking them to serve after election, that is no guaranteeing that they will accept the appointment. Our ideal candidate for each cabinet post is a nonpartisan, non-ideological, politically unaffiliated individual with formal education in or practical experience with the subject each department is centered around. For example, our selection for Secretary of Homeland Security is Dr. Stephen E. Flynn. Included among those who consider Dr. Flynn one of the world's experts on homeland security, transportation security, and critical infrastructure protection was the Bush administration and the Obama transition team, both of whom sought his advisement. Yet this most obvious choice for homeland security has been repeatedly overlooked for people like former governors Tom Ridge and Janet Napolitano, neither of whom had any formal education or practical experience in security matters. In comparison to whom the Republicans and Democrats have and will continue to appoint to our homeland security, Dr. Stephen Flynn is an overwhelmingly superior choice, a choice that will never be made without our citizen president. In like manner, if we consider the enormous challenge of refurbishing America's infrastructure that falls under the executive authority of the Department of Transportation, it would seem an obvious choice to select an individual from the American Society of Civil Engineers. And yet, of the 16 individuals who have held the position of Secretary of the Department of Transportation, only one, John A. Volpe, had any engineering education. And so it goes with all the cabinet positions. We have every confidence that should you decide to glance over some of our shadow cabinet selections, 
you will find a stark difference between our selections in terms of qualification and loyalty to the common good of our country with those of Republican and Democratic administrations. And you will have confidence in our seriousness about crafting policy that accrues to the benefit of all Americans, where no American is left behind.